How can we get really jacked and also really strong at the same time? A lot of people seem to think you can't, or at least you shouldn't, because how you should train to get strong is very different from how you should train to get big, they say. But I don't really agree with this. It's extremely common to hear that if you want to get strong, you need to lift heavy weight for low reps, and if you want to get big, you need to lift light to moderate weight for relatively higher reps. And there is sort of some truth to this. I mean, if you just look in any old personal training handbook, you'll probably find a table that looks something like this one, outlining clear and distinct rep zones for strength, hypertrophy, and endurance. For strength, you lift heavy, for size, you lift moderate, and for endurance, you lift light. And this has led to a flurry of Instagram infographics like this one, perpetuating the oversimplified idea that training heavy will get you strong, but not that big, and training light to moderate will get you big, but not that strong. But this isn't quite what the science says. One important study from Schoenfeld and colleagues split 20 trained men into two groups. One group trained with moderate loads, doing 10 reps for each exercise, and the other group trained with heavy loads, doing three reps for each exercise. Total volume was matched between the groups, and after eight weeks, both groups gained the same amount of muscle. Heavy weights and moderate weights were equally effective at building muscle mass. And this wasn't just one isolated finding either. I printed out every study I could find looking at the effect of high reps versus low reps on muscle hypertrophy. Now, obviously, we won't have time to go through each of these in detail, but luckily, research reviewer Greg Knuckles has already done that work for us. So each dot here represents a different data set. Now, if the Instagram infographics were right, we'd expect to see a curve something like this, where you see the best growth with moderate weights, and you see worse growth with heavy weights and light weights. But this isn't what we actually see. What we instead see is this, no obvious relationship between rep count and hypertrophy at all. Obviously, there are differences from study to study, just like there'd be differences from person to person. But overall, heavy weights, moderate weights, and light weights all clearly can cause muscle growth as long as you're training sufficiently hard. Now, as a quick aside, there does seem to be a bottom end to how light you can go. One 2018 paper found that once you dip down to 20% of your one rep max, you do tend to see less growth, but that would be really, really lightweight, at least 50 to 100 reps for most people. So it isn't really a practical concern anyway. The bottom line is that unless you're going really ridiculously light, heavyweights and lightweights are both effective at building muscle. But what about strength? Do you need to lift heavy to get strong, or is it the same as with size? As long as you're training hard enough, you'll see gains in any rep range. Well, it turns out that for strength, the rep range really does matter. In that Schoenfeld study, the heavy group doing three reps per set saw significantly better strength gains on the bench press than the moderate load group. And this is because strength is a specific skill. This means if you wanna get better at lifting heavy stuff, you've gotta lift heavy stuff. And so far, this is all good news for the power builder because it means we can do some heavy, so-called pure strength work, and it'll still count toward our size goals. And so this brings me back to the question I posed at the beginning. How can we train for strength and size at the same time? Well, we definitely need to do some low rep heavy lifting to get strong, but even though it might be tempting, we can't just do heavy low rep work exclusively because even though the results of the Schoenfeld study seem to indicate that low reps are the best on the surface, you get the same hypertrophy gains with better strength gains. If you dig into the details, you'll learn that the heavy sessions took more than four times as long to complete and the subjects reported higher mental and physical fatigue as well. So clearly, if we want to balance both of these goals, we definitely need to use a structured combination of different rep ranges. This is especially important because using a mixture of different rep ranges can likely trigger for growth through different mechanisms as well. It seems lower rep sets signal for muscle growth primarily through mechanical tension, whereas higher rep sets likely signal for growth primarily through metabolic stress. And rep counts in the middle would use more of a combination of the two. So to maximize growth overall, it makes sense to me to use some combination of all three. Now, if you're slightly more concerned with getting bigger, but still want to get stronger, you might want to set up your training something like this, with most of your working sets coming in the 6 to 12 zone, but you still have a solid third dedicated to heavy lifting for strength development. On the other hand, if you care a bit more about getting stronger, you should allocate more of your sets to the lower rep ranges, with the majority of your volume now coming in that heavier 1 to 5 rep zone. But regardless of how you split it up, that heavy slice should be directed toward the lifts you want to get stronger on the most, probably the squat, bench press, and deadlift for most of us. So let's go ahead and narrow in on those lifts a bit more now. now I already said that strength is a skill. This means 
means it isn't quite enough to just lift heavy. You also need to practice and refine the technical aspect of lifting to get as strong as you can be. And even though it technically counts as lifting heavy, just amping yourself up for one poorly executed balls to the wall set once every couple weeks unfortunately, probably isn't gonna do a whole lot for your max. Instead, I'd recommend intentionally practicing the big lifts around twice a week and maybe more. Personally, I hit the squat two to three days a week, bench two to three days a week, and deadlift one to two days a week, depending on the squat frequency and because deadlifts tend to take more of a recovery toll than the other two. And in my new power building program, which alternates between full body weeks and upper lower weeks, the full body week might look something like this, where you hit the squat, bench press, and deadlift all twice a week. Earlier in the week, you can go pretty hard and heavy. So you can take these sets to something like an RP of eight, maybe 8.5, where you're leaving just one or two reps in the tank. And then later in the week, you focus more on technique work where you're training a bit further from failure, but really honing in on your form. Now it's important to remember that if you were just gonna go in and max out on the power lifts every session, not only would you likely run into recovery issues, you'd also start ingraining poor technique habits, which could end up hurting your strength return over the long run. And I think getting better with technique is an extremely important and underappreciated form of progression. And so if there's a part of a lift that you struggle with, you can use this technique work later in the week to address those issues. For example, if you find your deadlift is slow off the floor, you can pull from a deficit to help address and strengthen that technical sticking point. Or if you find your back rounding increases as you lose tightness throughout the positive, you can do paused deadlifts with lighter weights to help strengthen that weak link for you. Paused squats can also be helpful for improving posture and explosive power out of the hole. And then to make sure your bases are covered for bodybuilding, you'd sort of just sprinkle in so-called accessory movements to fit your goals for hypertrophy in a way that doesn't interfere with your recovery from the other lifts. For example, putting a heavy pendlay row the day before heavy deadlifts might fatigue your lower back and impede your performance the next day. So do a chest supported row instead. And most of these accessory sets should come in the six to 12 rep range with a few in the higher, more metabolic 12 plus zone. And this is gonna allow you to accumulate more volume quite easily and scratch that beast mode, high effort mentality without the same recovery cost that approach would have on the heavy power lifts. And including sufficient accessory work is extremely important for the power builder because even though science tells us that we can get jacked off low rep sets, the squat, bench press, and deadlift don't hit every muscle adequately on their own. So only focusing on the big three will leave some muscles insufficiently stimulated. Squats are amazing for the quads and quite good for the glutes. Bench is amazing for the pecs and front delts and quite good for the triceps. And deadlifts are amazing for the spinal erectors, glutes, and good for the hamstrings. But that still leaves five key bodybuilding muscles that'll go underdeveloped if you focus on these power lifts exclusively the lats, biceps, rear and side delts, calves, and abs. So when sprinkling in the accessory work, you really need to emphasize these muscles. Now, generally speaking, aiming to hit at least eight to 10 sets for each of those muscles every week is a good idea, which is why I like the idea of having a roaming hypertrophy day, where you can kind of just go in and smash any body parts that didn't quite get enough volume during the main workouts for the week. And this is when I'll hit most of my bicep, side delt, and ab work personally. So that covers how I'd set up a sample week of training. Now I wanna take a step back and take a quick look at periodization and deloads. Now periodization would need a full video to do justice. Just look at that definition from the NSCA. But for now we can just take periodization to simply mean how you organize your training over time to maximize gains and minimize overtraining. Now in my opinion, beginners don't really need to worry too much about periodization. If you're still in your first year or two of lifting, you should be able to simply focus on progressive overload by adding a little bit of weight to the bar each and every workout. Just simple linear progression is the way to go for you. But at a certain point, you'll hit a plateau doing that, and that's where bigger picture periodization becomes important. So the broadest way to periodize for power building would be over a full calendar year, also known as the macro cycle. Here, I like to use a version of block periodization where we break the full year up into discrete phases, each with a unique primary focus. For example, you could kick off the new year with a power building phase where you're focused equally on gaining size and strength. Then if you start a cut for summer, you might wanna transition into more of a pure hypertrophy block where you decrease the heavy strength work down to just what's needed to maintain. And then after summer's over, you might wanna bump the calories back up and run a pure strength block 
where you have just enough accessory work to keep your size on, and then you'd finish off the year with another pure hypertrophy block, leveraging those new strength gains from block three, so now you can apply more overload to break through any plateaus that you may have encountered in block two. But if you don't wanna map everything out like that, you can totally shortcut the periodization planning by simply incorporating top sets into your workouts. Even if the only change you make to your current programming is simply adding one heavy top set once per week before the bodybuilding volume that you'd normally do, you should see solid strength improvements without detracting from your size goals as long as you continue to monitor your recovery. So for example, if you normally do three sets of 10 reps on the bench press, but you'd also like to get your strength up, just throw one heavy set of one to three reps beforehand. And in my experience, this is a simple and effective way to build top end strength while still having almost all of the rest of your pie dedicated to moderate to high rep ranges. And then over time, you just gradually add some weight or a rep to that heavy top set. And again, it doesn't have to be and shouldn't be to failure every session. It just needs to be reasonably heavy and reasonably challenging in a lower rep zone. And lastly, one concern with combining strength and size goals simultaneously is recovery. This is why I've emphasized throughout the video the importance of generally avoiding failure on the heavy lifts and always prioritizing technique over weight. However, I still think most lifters will benefit from occasional deloads to relieve soft tissue and joint stress and promote recovery. So at least once every couple months, reduce the weight on the bar and the volume by roughly 25 to 50% of what you'd normally do. Now, this isn't a time to just be lazy. Instead, as a power builder, you should take this single week to focus on ways to really improve your technique on the big lifts and improve your mind-muscle connection on the accessories, both of which will be much more effective with slightly lighter weights. So how can we get really jacked and really strong at the same time? Well, let's break it down into five simple steps. First, we need to combine rep ranges, doing some heavy lifting because strength is specific and some light to moderate lifting to avoid burnout. We need to refine our technique on the big lifts by practicing them about twice per week and then use accessory lifts to hit five of the key muscles that the squat, bench, and deadlift underemphasize. Beginners should use a simple linear progression to overload for at least the first year of training, while intermediate to advanced trainees should consider long-term block periodization and or top sets to continue driving progress. Then we need to continually manage recovery by generally avoiding failure on the big lifts and deloading at least once every couple months. And finally, if you guys would like to have all of that information put into an actionable routine, many of you guys know I just launched my new 10-week power building program designed for intermediate to advanced level lifters with the goal of gaining size and strength at the same time. And that'll be on sale for the first week of launch. This is the program that I've been running myself for the last few months, and I've test run it with a few friends, clients, and some coaches. And I really do think it's my best work to date as far as programming goes. I also wrote it so that all you need is some pretty basic equipment. And I ran it through the first time myself in a garage with just a power rack, some dumbbells, and bands. And if there are any exercises that require equipment, I always provide substitutions to make it more accessible. It comes with a separate technique handbook for addressing sticking points on the big lifts and a fully customizable spreadsheet for tracking progress. So you can just plug in your current lifts and it'll auto fill the weights that you need to do. Now, if you're still in your first year or two of training, I'd recommend running my fundamentals program instead, which also includes a full body split and an upper lower split, but the programming is more geared toward beginners. So I'll put a button to the new program over here next to my head if you guys would like to check it out. I'll also leave a link to everything that I discussed in this video in the description box down below. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.